Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Shalom. Peace, peace. This is Brother J. Israel coming to you again. Praise Yah. Giving the Most High Yah all honor, glory, and praise for being here today because without him, we know we would not be here. I would not be here. I suffer many trials and tribulations as many as, you, as many of you do. Excuse me. But the Most High has been good to us, has been great to us because he created us. It could always be worse. We weren't always suffering, and we won't always be suffering. And the Most High Yah has a glorious plan for us, for Israel, for Yasharal. Hallelujah. Let's open up with a word of prayer. The title of today's lesson is Yah's plan for Israel, Yasharal. First, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Most High Yah, we come to you giving you praise and thanks today, giving you all glory for creating us, for breathing the breath of life into each and every one of us, Father, for creating the world, the beauty that's in it, and though it may be wickedness in it, Father, you give us a choice. We don't have to succumb to the wickedness. We don't have to participate in the wickedness. We can resist the devil. And you have things that are glorious for us on the other side. Father, we pray that we get to the kingdom. We pray that we are just so worthy to be able to get to the kingdom of heaven on the day of judgment, Father. We pray that we can do righteousness in your eyes, Father. We pray that when we fall down, Father, may it be once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven times, as your word say, we get up, Father, and we are not tripped up by our sins and our calamity. We pray that your Ruach HaKodesh, Father, your Ruach HaKodesh dwells in us, your Holy Spirit, Father. We pray that we feel your presence, Father, within us at all times, Father, and we don't let us drop to our knees, Father. Let us close our eyes, whatever position, Father, that we pray in, that you will have us pray in, Father, and pray that we receive your Holy Spirit. We receive guidance. We walk in your ways, Father, at all times. Father, let us keep teaching, learning, preaching, talking to others about your word, Father. And not just be hearers of your word, Father, but be doers of your word as well, Father. We pray for all those who are sick and shut in, Father. We pray for healing for them. We pray for patience, peace, love, strength. We pray for all the brothers and sisters that are homeless, Father. All of those brothers and sisters that are in prison houses, Father. We pray that you redeem them, restore them, bring them to you, Father. Let your miracle, your light shine through them, Father. Let all the nothings, all those who are cast out and cast away, who are looked down, trodden upon the poor, the sick, Father, those who are not counted by the world, let them be counted by you. Let them bring your glory. Let, let your glory show through them, Father. Let us not be of the world, Father, although we are in the world. Let us focus on you, Father. We thank you, Father. We love you. We praise your name. Hallelujah. <sighs> Yah's plan for Israel, Yasharal. Yahsrael. Our people have been through so much and may continue to go to do some things for the time being. But it will cease. This is the word of Yah. This is the Most High God, the Elohim, King of all kings. This is his word, so it cannot come back void. He said that it will cease. He will bring an end to these curses. He'll be an end to these heathens and these wicked nations that go against him that are beaten down and trodden down his people. He has not forsaken us, Judah, Yehuda. He has not forsaken us, Israel, Yasharal. He has not forsaken us. He has not forgotten us. It don't make no difference what it looked like. Something can look one way and be a difference. 
be a different thing. It looks like it's no hope. But every time he wake us up and give us the breath of life, it's hope. Every time a new Israelite is born, it's hope. As long as the sun shine and the moon is out, it's hope. As long as it's the most high, it's hope. And he'll never go away. He'll never cease to exist. The king of heaven and earth. The only king. All these worldly people, that's just titles. They just people. And if they wicked and they're doing something, they only doing it to their own demise. They doing the will of the father in the sense of whatever wickedness he's allowing them to do for whatever purpose, whether it's a punishment or whether it's setting up their own demise to go to hell for eternity. Because all things work for the good of the Father. He's in control of all of it. Satan has to ask permission to do anything. He has limits to what he can do. He's under control. The demon's under control. Everybody fears and shakes and trembles at the Most High God. And we must remember because we're always thinking about and being told the bad things, that's part of Satan's plan to keep you in fear, to keep you in doubt, to keep you believing that he's more powerful. The heathens and the white men and these men and that man is more powerful than the most high. They more powerful than you, you nothing. But that's not what the father says. Let's get to the scriptures. Jeremiah 16, 14 through 15. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14 through 15. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Yah, that it shall no more be said, Yahuwah lives, Yahweh lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But Yah lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, North America. And from all the lands where he had driven. For I will bring them back into their land which I gave to their fathers. So you heard it right there. It's not just going to be said that, oh, he's the Elohim. He's the God that brought the Israelites out of Egypt. We know that. Many people don't even know we are those people. But it's a great awakening happening. And most people... Or many people, I know, I know that now. Many black people, Israelites, know that now. But they just think, oh, that's some long ago past, many of them. But the Father said it's not just going to be said that, oh, it's the Elohim, the God that bought them out of Egypt. It's going to be said that it's the Elohim that bought them out of the land of the north. Babylon, a.k.a. America, and the lands that he scattered us to, to. So that's Britain and all these other places that we scattered. All these different islands. And he gonna give us back the land that he gave our fathers. Let's keep going. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Because we think that we forsaken. Many of us think that we forsaken. It don't matter that you're going through your trial of tribulation. That's supposed to happen. You suffering just like your master suffered. And if you suffering for righteousness, if you're not doing wrong and you're suffering, then great is your reward in the kingdom of heaven. That's what the word tells us. You picking up your burden, your cross. It's hard. It sucks. It's terrible. Trust me, I know. Trust other people, they know. The brother that just got uh, <clears throat> let out of jail, let out of prison, he was in there for 16 years for a crime he didn't commit. I forget the brother's name, but it's many of those brothers. And it was video evidence that it was never him, that they had all along. You think that ain't horrible for him, That he, what he went through? 
that that was an easy life? Of course not. But the Most High show his grace and his mercy because he got him up out of there. The brothers say it felt like heaven on earth, that he home, that he could just come out of a cell and breathe. All praise to the Most High, yeah. The Father is performing his miracles every day. Ask Le Cartier about his miracles. When his heart stopped for 14 hours, ask him and his parents if the Father forsaken us. He sure woke him up from the dead. I laid in the bed for weeks. Couldn't see straight. Was trembling. Every time it was loud sound. Later on after that, couldn't sleep at night. Just sitting and rocking. Been through many trials and tribulations. Many of us have. The father bought me out. I didn't think I would be talking to anybody today. About anything. And although things still happen, it's not 24-7. We have to be thankful for the little things. Just thankful when you don't have some pain. Thankful when you can walk, when you can talk, when you can eat a good meal, when you can smile at your children and fellowship with them. If the Father gave you children, those are blessings. The Father said that's like Arrows in a warrior's quiver. That's the little thing they keep the arrows in. Our children born to a man in his youth. Those are blessings. He blessed for those because they need it. A warrior need arrows to fight. If you got a lot of them, each child you get, you don't know what that child might be. Who that child going to be? What that child going to do for the kingdom? How that child going to help glory to, glorify the Father? And it adds on to your lineage. Don't listen to the world telling you, oh, if you got a child like how the, uh, they got the sisters doing brothers now. If you got a child, uh, no, nah, you're not dateable, man. If you got more than one child or the brothers do the sisters, oh, she got two or three children. No, nah, can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, she might have did sin, but we all did sin. He might have did sin. But the children ain't the sin. The children are the blessing, especially certain children. Some of these children, the Most High is flowing all through them. You can just see it in their spirit. They so sweet. They so kind. They so strong. They so intelligent. And then others are difficult as part of the curses. Others are extremely difficult. That might be your challenge as a parent. You might have extremely difficult. That might be your birth. It's not easy. It's not, I'm not, we're not making light of none of this in no way. But everybody got a burden to pick up. And it's better you suffer for righteousness than wickedness because if you suffer for righteousness and you're faithful, you cry out to the Father, you call on the Father, you be patient and wait on the Father, you can get to the kingdom. But if you suffer for wickedness, what's the point of your suffering? If you suffering because you robbing, stealing, murdering, raping, then that means you're going to suffer in the physical, in the present, in this world, and you're going to suffer in the spiritual. You're going to hell if you don't repent, if you don't change your ways and walk in the light. You're going to, so you're going to suffer double. And the one that's in the next life ain't nothing compared to this one. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. 
These are the Father's words. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith Yah, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you. Hallelujah. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith Yah. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you, whither I have driven you, saith Yah. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Again, the Father is telling us, I don't have no thoughts to do evil towards you. I don't want to do evil towards you. I don't want to punish you. I had to punish you. But I got thoughts of peace towards you. Re restoration. He said we're going to seek him out with all our heart. And he will be found by us. That's what's happening now. We're awakened. And I pray that it continues to happen. We have to cry out. Those who believe we have to cry out for others, the tears sometimes is not about yourself. It might be about what you're going through, but it may not even be what you're going through. It's crying out for your people, for Yasharala. It's crying out to the Father, Father, bring us back so we can glorify your name, so we can get out of this mess, so we can do your will, be pleasing to your eyes, to your ears. The father say he going to turn away our captivity. That's prison. That's slavery. That's bondage. All this stuff that we go through. And he going to gather us from all these nations. We coming out. His word cannot be void. It's not going to be a lie. Whether you believe it or not, that's on you. Jeremiah 30. Three through eleven, and then fifteen to twenty-four. The days, of J Jeremiah again. I'm sorry, thirty three through eleven, and then fifteen to twenty-four. Jeremiah chapter thirty, starting with verse three. The days are coming, declares Yah, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their ancestors to possess, says Yah. So he bringing us back. The days are come. These are the words Yahuwah spoke concerning Israel and Judah. This is what Yah says. Cries of fears are heard. Terror, not peace. Ask and see. Can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares Almighty Yah, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Excuse me. Instead, they will serve the Most High Yah, their Elohim and that David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid. Jacob, my servant, do not be dismayed. Israel, declares the Most High Yah, I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares Yah. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. Hallelujah. Correct us, Father. He corrected us. He's still correcting us. And we need to be thankful for it, as a good father would. A good father a good parent is not going to let you misbehave and sit there and not do nothing. If they don't discipline you, they don't care about you. 
The Bible tells us that that's common sense, which comes from the Most High Yah, even though many people don't use it. If you will sit there and let your child misbehave and do things against you and against they self and against they greater good, then you do not care about them. And we know that the Most High loves us, Jacob, Israel. So the father said he's going to bring us back. He's going to break off the yokes, the iron, the chains are from off our necks of bondage. We going to serve him and David. So somebody from the lineage of David, who he brings up, don't be afraid. Verse 10, don't be afraid, Jacob. Don't be dismayed, Israel. All these things we see, we cannot be afraid. We can't be coward. I know it's hard because everything seems like it's stacked up against us. But if y'all be for you, who could be against you? If the Most High is for you, who could be against you? What did he do for Daniel in that lion's den? What did he do for Jonah in that belly of that well? What did he do for Joseph when his brothers tried to kill him? When he was in that prison house in Egypt? What did he do for Noah and his family in that boat? And they was in that boat for a long time. In that ship. In that ark. What did he do for Sarah by giving her a child? What did he do for Hannah by giving her a child? What did he do for Rachel? Stop being like these wicked women and these Jezebels not wanting children. Not wanting children goes against the most high woman, Israelite woman. Stop killing your babies, sacrificing your babies to the devil, getting these abortions. That's wickedness. And you will be judged for it. Men, stop telling these women to get abortions. Stop not taking responsibility for your child to the best of your ability. Do everything that you can. Whatever the Most High puts on you to do. I know it's difficult. I know many of them. I against you. They got Jezebel spirits. They hate men. They don't want you to see your child. They threaten you. They disrespect you. They just want you to get them money or they just want to wipe out any existence of you. They want to cut off all contact after they get the baby. We know what's going on. The father knows what's going on. Cry out to him. Keep going. Pray to him. Fight back. Pray for that child. Guide that child. If you don't got no money, get that child some wisdom. Give them the word of Yah. That's better than money. Hallelujah. If you're giving them money, let them know that it's not about the money. Don't love this money. Love the most high Yah. Love me like I love you. It's, I'm only giving you this money because you need some clothes, because you need some food. It's not about what I give you through the world. It's about what the Most High give you. It's about the love I give you. It's about me teaching you the word, teaching you, training you up how to go. Hallelujah. The Most High say he's going to completely destroy these other nations that we scattered us, but he's not going to destroy us. He's going to discipline us, and we know that. We've been getting whooped. Slavery, prison, killed in the streets, spit on, talked about. Made fun of cartoons, movies, relationships fell, children being disobedient, women out of order. Our men don't want to be men. They want to be babies, many of them, and, and, and women. The women don't want to be women, many of them. They want to be men. They don't want to be the women that the most high has for them to be virtuous. They want to be whores. 
Pray to the Father, repent. Even if you did that, you don't have to keep doing that. Look how the Most High changed Paul. Paul was a murderer of believers in Hamashiach. He can change anybody. He can take you out of that homosexuality. He can take you out of that sin and wickedness. You don't have to keep being a thief. Turn to the Father. He'll provide your food. He'll provide your shelter. Is it better for you to not have anything and get to the kingdom of heaven or have a few dollars? Have your thousands of dollars here. Have your million dollars here. Have your house or your car here, but then you got to rot in hell for eternity. What's better? Is your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your hand causes you to sin, chop it off. Whatever's causing you to sin, get rid of it. Porn, TV, phone, video game. Girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. If they causing you to sin, they won't change. Then you need to make a change. Father, mother, friend. Because it's not your friend if they bringing you to your end. Your friend going to lift you up. Hallelujah. Uh, Jeremiah 30 and 15. 30 verse 15. Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. The Father telling us why it happened. But we're going to keep going into it. We did great sins. Why do you cry out? Your pain has no cure until he cures it. Ain't no politician, no pastor, no judge, nobody. No prophet can't cure it, nobody. No leader, no organization, can't nothing cure it but the Most High Yah. But Yahushua Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Ain't no cure. Once the Father do it, ain't nothing changing what he do. And he gave us so many chances over and over again, our ancestors, and they kept on doing idolatry. But we're going to get into that. Sixteen, but all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. All who make spoil of you, I will despoil. What do we say? He's telling you. They going into bondage. They devoured and killed you. They going to be killed. They took all your stuff. All their stuff is going to be taken away. Just wait. They were spoiled off taken from you, off using you as a slave. They going to be despoiled. I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Hallelujah. Because we got a lot of them, declares Yah. Because you are called an outcast, Zion, from whom no one cares. And we know, don't nobody care about nobody black. Even our own people most of the time don't care. I shot that nigga. That's what they say. Or another one dead. Oh, well, or whatever. Around the world, oh, man, they killed another one. Oh, he must have did something. He should have just complied with the police. Another game banger dead. Another, oh, well, it happens all the time. That's how they feel. Oh, well, our lives don't mean nothing. When you got to hold up signs and say Black Lives Matter, that tell you. Because you wouldn't have to make the sign if everybody followed that and knew that. We are Zion. We Israel. We Jacob. 18, this is what Yah says, I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt, rebuilt on her ruins and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them will come songs 
of thanksgiving and sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor and they will not be disdained. Their children will be as in days of old and their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Hallelujah. Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near and he will come close to me for he is he who will devote himself to be close to me. So whoever devotes himself to be close to the father that the father appoints will be the leader, declares Yah. So you will be my people and I will be your God, your Elohim. See the storm of Yahuwah will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yah will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will understand this. So it's in the most high heart to restore us. It's in the most high heart to bring down these nations, to bring wrath on them. So ain't nothing going to stop them. Ain't no point in you saying nothing about it. All we can say is let his will be done. Just like his will was done to us for our disobedience and they had their way. They was able to rape, pillage, plunder, kill, brutalize, laugh at, do whatever they wanted. Well, the most high about to have his way. Hey. Do unto others. What you do to people will be done unto you. Recompense. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 37. Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 through 37. The days are coming, declares Yah, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them out of the hand, by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares Yah. Yah looks at, Zion, Israel, Yasharala, like a wife. And he's a great husband, so you're supposed to be loyal to your husband. Your husband is loyal to the wife, faithful. He's saying he was faithful to us, loyal, protected us. But we broke his covenant. 33, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares Yah. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. Praise Yah. I will be their God, their Elohim, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Most High Yah, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares Yah. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Hallelujah. Won't that be a glorious time? He going to forgive our sins. Ain't nobody going to have to teach nobody the word. It's going to be clarity because he going to write it in our hearts. Write it in our minds. Everybody going to know his name, what to say. They going to know all the laws, what to follow. They going to be obedient. 35. This is what Yah says. He will appoint the sun to shine by day who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that it way, its waves roar. The Most High Yah Almighty is his name, Yahuwah, Yahweh Almighty. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, so only if the sun don't shine, the moon and the, moon and the stars don't shine at night, the waves of the sea don't stir up, don't roar. Only then, the father said, if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares Yah, will Israel ever cease being a nation before me? So long as that stuff is in place, we're going to be a nation before the Most High. He's saying he not doing away with us. He got us. That's the big homie. That's the biggest homie of all. That's the almighty Yah, the father, king of all kings. 
If he got you, who can stop you? 37, this is what Yah says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject all the descendants of Israel because all they have done, declares Yah. So he's a merciful and just God, a merciful and just Elohim. We did all this wickedness. And he say he still, he still will not reject us. He punished us. Punishment ain't rejection. Rejection is doing away with you. You don't belong to me. You say, hey, I got a child. You did wrong. You did something so wrong. I never speak to you again. You don't exist to me. Anytime somebody say, "Who do you got a son or daughter? The, the father say, nope. I don't got no child. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't talk to him no more. Who is that? You shunned and it never going to change. That's rejection. Correction is, hey, you can't do that in my house. You got to go. Or I whooped your butt. Or give me that laptop. Give me that computer. Give me that video game. Oh, you on punishment for six months, three months, whatever the punishment is, depending on the severity of your actions. I know many of us want to pretend like, oh, I mean, yeah, we do a little bit of sin in the man. We might not go to church. It ain't about no going to no church. The church is within you. These churches is false and fake anyway. They worshiping on the first day of the week and not the Sabbath. They leading the people astray. They not telling you the true word. They teaching you prosperity gospel. If you do this, uh, that the most high just going to give you money. He going to make you rich. He going to just pay your bills. Treating the most high like a sugar daddy or something. When the Bible say the opposite, the Bible say money is the root of all evil. It's hard for a rich man to get in heaven. It's easier than a camel going through the eye of a needle. Do not store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and rot. But store up your riches in the kingdom of heaven. Do good things. Don't worry about the financials. Love your brothers and sisters. Forgive. Honor the Father. Follow his law, statutes, and commands. That's what the word say. That's what the Father says. The world teach you about money. Loving money. Lusting out the money. So it's not about doing what the world say. You got to do what the Father says. Stop pretending like you ain't doing no sin. We sin in our thoughts. We sin in our dreams and daydreams. Bad thoughts come to your mind. You got to rebuke Satan. When you think somebody talking and you trying to telling them, Satan telling you, putting it in your mind, your mind talking about shut the, shut the fuck up when they talking, stuff like that. I can't stand him. I can't stand that type of stuff. You sinning, you sinning in. You're not supposed to have wicked thoughts against your brothers and sisters. That's a sin. Past going around slandering people. Fornication, adultery. We sin all the time. Stop talking about what sin is you doing. For we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of the Most High Yah. Idol worship, these video games, this food, talking about mukbangs and all that, gluttony, getting drunk, getting high. Killing people. Bickering and fighting. That's all sin. Abortions. And so many other things. Sin. Repent.
idol worship, sports. Let's go back to our sins that we commit against the Most High. So many. Sins piling up to heaven. The number one sin, not honoring the Father, putting anybody before him, putting anybody on his level, worshiping anything else. What did our people worship? Idol worship, golden calves, sun worship, worshiping stones, animals, people, the moon, demons, sacrificing in the high places, sacrificing the children over the mullet. Or however you say that, demon. Bowing to these statues of this white Jesus. These crosses. These flags. These celebrities. These stars. Idol worship. Wickedness. Sin. Prostitution. Destroying prostitutes back then. The prostitution today, <clears throat> having sex for money, telling other people to prostitute themselves, molestation, rape, selling your body on the internet, selling pictures of your body, videos of your body, sexual sins, incest, rape, orgies, homosexuality, bestiality. Murder, killing the prophets, killing your brothers and sisters, killing the children. Witchcraft, witch, wizardry, divination, medium, psychic, sorcery, magic, all that stuff, wickedness. I'm calling on the ancestors. I'm building an altar, calling on the ancestors, spitting out liquor and all that. Don't be fooled. Many of us have been fooled by that. Don't be fooled just because it's black. Mean black people did it don't mean it's right. We do wickedness too. We did a whole lot of wickedness. What do the fathers say? What the Bible say about it? Don't read them carol cards. Don't let nobody read you. You opening yourself up to demons and Satan. If the person is a psychic, a medium, a witch, they are a middleman. Between the devil. So the devil get in them. Give them some abilities. And their job is to recruit others. To open up Satan through. Them. <clears throat> Medium. In between. Middle man. Middle woman. Drinking blood. Don't be no twilight. No vampire. Don't do like these heathens, these devils do and eat that meat, that blood and that meat. Don't be going down on no women like they do in New Orleans, going down on no woman doing her period. Don't be having sex with no woman on her period. These are all sins. These are things that we all have done or many of us have done. You might not have done all of it, but you didn't done some of it. And if you haven't done none of it, make sure you don't do it and tell other people don't do it. Rejecting Hamashiach, rejecting the Messiah. Many claim to be Yasharala. Many claim to be believers. You ain't no believer if you reject the Son. You cannot get to the Father but through the Son. And if you reject the Son before man, he going to reject you before the Father in heaven. Play with it if you want to. That's that Pharisees and Sadducees wickedness that they was doing. They would not accept him as the Messiah. They talking about they following Moses' law. He above Moses. The Most High gave Moses them laws. Them ain't Moses' laws. That's Yah's laws. And if you was following Moses' laws, then you wouldn't be rejecting the Most High. You wouldn't be rejecting the Messiah, Hamashiach. Wickedness. <clears throat> The wages of sin is death, condemnation, hell. We were supposed to get blessed. 
Read Deuteronomy 28. We were supposed to be blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed coming in, blessed going out. We were supposed to be the head and not the tail, but we disobeyed. The fruit of the womb was supposed to be blessed. Our crops were supposed to be blessed. Our land was supposed to be blessed. But because of our disobedience, look what happened. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. However, if you do not obey Yah, your Elohim, and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in a city and cursed in a country. 16. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. You will be cursed coming in and going out. The Most High will send curses on you, confusion, rebuke, and everything you put your hand to until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done and forsaken him. So why you think we say it all the time, dang, why nothing we do don't it just don't pan out for us as a whole. <clears throat> we make Black Wall Street. They destroy it. We get the Black Panthers. They just kill us. We, this, Malcolm X, lead the rise up. They just kill us. Why we can't have no stores? The Bible say the foreigner will rise up, come in your land and rise up higher than you. Why are we sick? Uh, 28 and 21. The Lord, the Most High Yah, will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. 22. Yah will strike you with waste and disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, with, which will plague you until you perish. That's why. He cursed us for being wicked. Hypertension, diabetes, cancer, kidney disease, heart failure, stroke. Uh, 28 and 25, Yah will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will come at them in one direction but flee in seven. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms on earth. Black people are looked at as a thing of horror. A nigger. You will be a bower. A nigger. Oh, look at these wild niggers. Look at them. They put the movies out. All they want to do is kill and twerk. The women is just hoes. They gay. And they kill us. That's it. We know it ain't true. But that's what the world will look at you as. That's what the Bible says. You will become a thing of horror. Uh, 28 and 26. Your carcasses will be food for all the birds and wild animals, and there will be no one to frighten them away. So when we was hanging from them trees, just we still are too. Don't believe you ain't. Them crows and them birds coming down eating your rotten flesh. When your body was laying in the street, them animals, them jackals and coyotes eating on us. Twenty-eight, Yah will afflict you with madness, blindness, and confusion of mind. All these brothers and sisters that seem to be out their mind, demented, confused, don't know what gender they are, don't wanna, don't know that a man is supposed to be with a woman and a woman is supposed to be with a man, not vice versa. That's confusion. That's mad. Alzheimer's and all these different diseases where we don't know who we are and even just not knowing who you are as a nation, not knowing that you are Shirala. Not knowing the Most High. Hosea, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. 28 and 29, at midday you will grope around like a blind person in the dark. Our brothers and sisters, unemployed, don't know what to do with themselves. In the middle of the day, just walking around, sitting around, just taking a chair out, sitting outside or standing outside, don't know what to do with themselves. 
You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day, you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to rescue. So until the father rescue us, he said, ain't going to be nobody that can rescue. And ain't nobody going to want to rescue. You will be 30. You will be pledged to mar be married to a woman, but another will take her and rape her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even enjoy its fruit. What happened all through slavery? Our women being raped. Our women still being raped today in prisons, going down the street, being raped by our own nation. You got a wife, somebody just come up and rape her, take her. Our women was raped in slavery times. They raping them right in front of us. You know your wife getting raped. You can't do nothing about it. If you did do something about it, they just going to kill you or rape you or mutilate you, castrate you, beat you to death in front of everybody, whatever. You will build a house. We built this whole country, but you ain't going to live in it. So you built all them nice houses, built the White House. Build up all these lands, but you can't live in. The wicked of this world, these wicked devils and heathens, they living in all the good parts. You living in the ghetto, the slums. You plant food, you plant the cotton, you plant the vegetables. But you're not eating it. You're not enjoying this fruit. You the one working in the factory. The factory, uh, the company making billions or millions. You making $20 an hour, 15. You're not enjoying that because then they take everything from your bills. Even today, we go to work. People go to work 40, 50, 60 hours if they can. Because some don't even have a job. They might have a house or apartment, but you can't really enjoy it because you're never there. You're always at work. Uh, 28 and 32. Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation, and you will wear out your eyes watching for them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. So when they would take one of us out of Africa, out of Israel, out of any of the lands that we was in, you'd be taken from wherever you was at if you was an Israelite and then your people, you taken by people that look like you. They might not be Israelites, but they look like you. You taken by the white devils of many races, Portuguese, Spanish, uh, Italian. You taken by the Arabs. And then if two of your sons take it, you might got two left, but y'all wearing out your ass crying because you know you ain't going to never see them again. They taking them thousands of miles away to a whole nother continent. Uh, 33, a people that you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce and you will have nothing but cruel, uh, cruel oppression all your days. 34, the sights you see will drive you mad. All this killing, all this destruction, all these things happen to us, it be driving our people mad. That's why many of them go out they mad. That's why many of us drink all day, smoke. They can't, it can't take this, this, this pain. But this is what the Most High gave us for our disobedience. We should never want to be disobedient again. The Most High will afflict your knees and legs with painful boils that cannot be cured, spreading from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. All this different sickness. Specifically the boils that might have happened before, but it's different diseases that people got that reflect that scripture. 36, Yah will drive you and the king you set over you to a nation unknown to your ancestors. We know America, Britain, France, Portugal, Spain, Italy. 
There you will worship other gods, gods of woods and stone, statues, crosses, Buddhas, white Jesus. 37, you will become a thing of horror, a byword and an object of ridicule among all the people where y'all will drive you. Nigga. Nigga is known all over the world and you know who face they show when they say nigga. And they talk about a specific people, Israel. They not talking about anybody that just got mellow. So stop with that mess. Yes, they might be persecuted somewhat, but they don't fit up under what happened to Israel. Yasharala. They didn't go through all that. <clears throat> uh, 28 and 41. Your sons and daughters... You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them because they will go into captivity, slavery, prison. 43, we just talked about this earlier. The foreigners who reside among you will rise above you higher and higher, but you will sink lower and lower. That's why the Arab, that's why the, uh, the person from India, Habib and all them, the Chinese, this and that. That's why they could come to your community. That's why they could come different places that you stay and they could take off through business. They could take off with everything. It's a curse on you. The Most High put this on us for being disobedient. But he said he's going to take it off. And all those who got spoiled off of what happened to us, our punishment going to be despoiled. All those who played off in our persecution going to be persecuted. Uh, 47, 28, 47. Because you not, did not serve Yah, your Elohim, joyfully and gladfully in the time of prosperity. Therefore, in hunger and thirst and nakedness and dire poverty, you will serve the enemies of Yah. They are enemies of Yah, these heathens and these Gentiles. He will put an iron yoke. Go look at slavery and look at them iron yokes on your neck until you have, he has destroyed you. Forgive me, Father. <clears throat> 49, Yah will bring a nation against you from far away from the ends of the earth like an eagle swooping down. What's the bird of America? An eagle. A nation whose language you will not understand. English. A fierce looking nation without respect for the old or pity for the young. The Caucasian. They will devour the young of your livestock and the crops of the land until you are destroyed. They will leave you no grain, no new wine, oil, nor any calves of your herds or lambs of your flock until you are ruined. They take from everything. The Arab, the Caucasians. 53. Because of the suffering your enemy will afflict on you during the siege, you will eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters. Yah, your Elohim will, has given you. 54, even the most gentle and sensitive man among you will have no compassion for his brother or for the wife he loves or his surviving children. And he will not give to one of them any of the flesh of his children that he is eating. It will all be, he, it will all, it will be all he has left because of the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege of your cities. These things happen cannibalism because of starvation killing your own children that's eating the fruit of your womb abortion uh, 64 y'all will scatter you among all nations from one end of the earth to the other it's black people everywhere there you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone, which neither you or your ancestors have known. Among those nations, you will find no repose, no resting place for the sole of your feet. Yah will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing, and a despairing heart. You will live in constant suspense, filled with dread, both night and day, never sure of your life. Never sure of your life, constant fear, slavery. You run away, any little thing in the forest, in the woods. You think it's the slave catcher. 
Police come behind you. You never know if they're going to kill you. That's in constant suspense, constant dread. That's why I don't see why these sisters and these brothers watch, especially these sisters. They love watching these uh, cop shows. What you watching a cop suspense movie for? You could get suspense. You get suspense by every time you uh, pull out your driveway, out your parking space. That's suspense. You never know if the cops going to kill you or beat you or put you in jail, rape you. That's part of the curses. You don't need to watch it on TV, too. But that's love for Babylon. That's being where you so beat down, you start loving your oppressor. So you want to see what's done to you. Again, you want to live it out and play it. What we watching Lock Up for? I had a habit of that back in the What am I watching Lock Up for? So I'm not locked up, but I'm in the mindset that I am locked up because I'm watching these brothers that's locked up. Many of them with these demonic spirits on them, these demons in them. They demons and devils talking about all the wickedness they done, raping men in jail, killing, cutting off heads and all this stuff. What are we watching that for? Satan got a hold of you. Don't watch that. Satan had a hold of me. Don't watch that filth. The eyes and the ears are portals. The eyes are the windows of the soul. Watch and hear light, good things. The word of Yah. Listen to Uplifting spiritual music from the Most High Yah. Not just any spirit, because everything is a spirit. Evil spirits and good spirits. But this is what the Father said will happen to us. Because of the wickedness that we did. But what's going to come? Of Babylon, America, and all those, North America, all those who took part in that. Jeremiah 51, 1 through 33. Go read Jeremiah 51, 1 through 33. I'm not going to read over all of it. I'm just going to pick out a few scriptures. Uh, 51 and 1. Thus saith Yah, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Two, and I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. What you think all this uh migrant stuff is about? The Most High sending them, sending them in to destroy Babylon. Three, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted himself up in his brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Then what does the Most High tell us? Five, for Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his Elohim, of Yahuwah of hosts. <coughs> Excuse me, Father. Though... Their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Six, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, her sin. For this is the time of Yah's vengeance. He will render unto her recompense, payback. The big payback. That's the real big payback. The real big payback. Uh, ninth, we skip to 19, but go read all of it. The portion of Jacob is not like them. Talking about the heathens. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. He talking about Israel. He says, for we, for with thee, I will break in pieces the nations. He's going to use us to break in pieces the nations. So we're going to have some mighty powers to break the nations. You're going to be having some mighty powers from the heavenly father. Oh, to see them days, to see the looks on them brothers' faces, <clears throat> them sisters' faces. And with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider, 
And with thee, I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee, I will break in pieces old and young. And with thee, I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee, I will break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen. And with thee, I will break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they did in Zion in your sight. Say of Yah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, it's going to be out here destroying in the name of Yah. The Father is going to destroy these nations and he's going to use us to break them apart. So, brothers and sisters, brothers might be having that, all that X-Men and that superpower, superhero stuff. Brothers might be out here clowning with it. They shooting guns. Brothers might be out here stopping bullets. Brothers might be out here invisible, flying, super strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Father. There are glorious times to come. We going into the wilderness. He said he bringing all of us out. We going up under the rod and correction. So a lot of people going to have to be destroyed because they going to be out there trying to clown, do all that same stuff. Wickedness, homosexuality, the most high going to cleanse all that purge. Everybody watching these purge movies, it's going to be a purge. I mean... So if you're fortunate enough to make it in that time and you still here, don't get out there with them clowning. You better get as far from them as possible. Because you know how the Father do with them plagues, with that lightning, with that fire coming down from heaven, destroying. You don't want to be nowhere near that. So it's a glorious time. It's a lot of things happening. It's trials and tribulations, but it's a glorious time. Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, when you go through trials and tribulations of many kinds. Because it's the testing of your faith. It's giving you perseverance. The spiritual man, the man inside, the woman inside is being renewed. The physical going to break down. We going to suffer. These bodies are weak. These bodies, this flesh wants to sin. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. Make your spirit strong. Pray to the Father. Stay in the word. Repent. Obey the Father. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Fast. Pray. When you fast, don't tell people you fasting because you know they're going to try to tempt you with food. It's not about when you give, don't make no video of you giving because you getting your reward on earth. You want your reward from the Father. You want your reward in the kingdom of heaven. You don't show everybody. Do it in secret. So only the Father can see. So he can give you the praise. Not so everybody can tell you, oh man, you a real one, man. You a blessing. You so great. That's the temptation of the flesh because that's going to get to you. You want to hear that. That boosts your ego up. You want the glory to go to the Father so it ain't about you. So you got to do it in silence. I pray that this message glorifies and edifies the Father. I pray that it's a peace, a sin, and a healing offering. I hope that it uplifts you. I pray that you share this. I pray that you meditate on it. Go to the word. Go to the scriptures. I pray that the Father allows me to keep learning, to keep growing, to keep teaching. I thank you. I praise the Father for you. I praise the Father for all who believe. I pray many blessings on you if you believe in the Father, if you trust in the Father and yours. And if you don't, I pray for your soul. I pray that you repent. If you in need of healing, I pray that you get healing. If you in need of your necessary essentials from day to day, I pray that you get them. I don't pray that you be rich because that's going to corrupt your soul.
That's going to corrupt your spirit. That's going to take you away from the father. As the rich man, when he asked, what can he do to get to the kingdom of heaven? And Yahushua told him, follow the commandments. He said, he do all that. And he told him, sell all your goods and come follow me. And he went away sad because he didn't want to give up what he had. That's the human nature of flesh. Give up those things so you can follow Hamashiach. Get your blessings in the kingdom of heaven. Shalom. Hallelujah.